Hey, what's up? It's Keith with the L1 Automotive Training Channel. And yes, I'm a little sunburnt. Um, so it is Tuesday at 29 minutes after 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, and it is getting crazy here at the shop. I made that joke about the Diag only shop last time, and you know we had the Eco Diesel with the cab off. Uh, it got back together. We went and drove it, and it had a coolant leak. So we called the driver of this um, flag vehicle for it's an oversized load flag company from a guy out of Tennessee. I'm looking at the name on there uh, for privacy. I will not say who it is. Um, I don't know if they care or not. Care. I, I don't know. Anyways, we called the driver and talked to him and said, hey, man, um, how long have you been adding coolant to it? And he was like, oh, I've been adding coolant pretty regularly. I'm like, Pah. So we pull the whole valley back apart a couple hours into it and find a coolant bypass hose from head to head that is leaking. So that thing's back apart. No fun. Um, the... Camaro, we put an engine in from Jasper. It has way too much timing, and that PCM was tuned by a company that Jasper had us send the um, engine control module to a company. They tuned it. The problem is it does not communicate now, but it does output data. So let's get over here. So I have the PCM uh, on the bench, and it's, uh, it's talking on the Pen9 UART connector. Um, it's got serious, not what it should be using to talk. Anyways, uh, I had, it may still be up on the Diag cart. I had the bus sniffer up and was, that is not it. That is just from something else. Anyways, different, that was CAN bus. This is UART, it's like a five volt pull down. Anyways, measured data packets. It is about 33.3 .3 kilobits per second. So uh, that module is talking, but something's not allowing it to talk. So call in the company that did the tuning. They're hooking me up tomorrow morning with the guy who did it, who locks the tunes to see if that is a normal occurrence that I should not be able to communicate with it. Problem was, is I can't find where we did a pre-scan on this car, uh, but it came in for a misfire and had a mechanical noise, so we pulled the valve cover, which still is way off for us. We typically scan everything that comes in the door. I mean everything, regardless of what we're doing to it. So, weird situation. Definitely not a car problem though, something on the model. We can talk to everything else in the car, but the engine control module. And the car starts, runs, and drives. It just has a uh, spark knock, and you can definitely hear that the timing is quite a bit advanced when you go to start it. It's got kind of loads up when you go to start it. Anyways, weirdness. Uh, the Lightning Strike Buick is still here. We're tracking down more CAN bus opens, so the entire dash is out of the car. So we're all the way to, to that point. Also, it was outside, so it was kind of nasty. We've got a the other truck that was a lightning strike truck. Um, it is running and driving down to the last couple little things. We're figuring out a fuel rail pressure sensor problem. Uh, this is a, a collision vehicle that we're doing the ABS control module on. We actually put an entire engine harness in this from a collision customer of ours. It's a great put a OEM engine harness in. We did do that. It runs and drives now. Uh, it was a smelted component on that. It was kind of crusty. I think it's still sitting over here on this box. Yes. Whoa. Some little, I don't even know. I didn't work on it, but it's all, oh yeah, smells like money. Smelted. So, uh, came in, no crank, no start all the lights on, it's a hybrid, it's like a 2012. So we put an engine harness in it, it's all an ABS fault, but it's a internal fault. I don't remember what the issue is, so we got a brand new Yoda ABS modulator control valve assembly. Then we have some weird fusion that doesn't talk that Zach 2 is working on. Yes, there's a breakout box in there, so yeah, he's working on it. Hey, pizza. It's Domino's, it's not very, I don't know if that's going to count as good stuff. We have a Tucson. Fun, fun story. Hyundai Tucson. Um, it came here with a P0266 code and a fuel injector that I believe is counter. So let's walk on over here to the flow bench. Um, it's got too many other parts on it right now. But I don't know if you can notice the pigment on the injector number two is a slightly different color. It's more obvious when they weren't all nasty and dirty. 
Um, I will, if I can remember to, I'll put a picture right here of the results of the flow bench test, uh, indicating that the P0266 cylinder contribution from cylinder two uh, fuel ejector is incorrect. Uh, fuel trims and data all led us to believe that it was definitely a fueling issue, a lack of fuel. It uses O2 sensor data and trims for correction of an imbalance per injector. Uh, pretty interesting scenario for a 13 Hyundai. Anyways, uh, thank goodness for the Autool thing. You can There's a link in the description on where to get yourself a flow bench. Uh, they're kind of pricey, but totally worth it. Uh, uh, Mother-in-law's Mustang. We've got uh, this, which I think is getting a front radar calibration, I believe. Um, this BMW is here from another shop. Um, a 2000 5 Series 528i. It um, has a couple throttle bodies and then a brand new throttle body installed on it. Problem was, is we were called to do the engine control module programming on this, uh, but the customer wanted to do a used one, so we he provided a used PCM. The part numbers were completely different, so we Went ahead and did some EEPROM work. I don't remember if I made a video on that or not. I may not have. If I did, it's on my training website, l1training.com. So I added, uh, anyways, we EEPROM'd it, made it start, run, drive. Still had the P0601 or something code, so it's here for us to diag. Um, yeah, and then there's my Lexus and stuff over there. But what's getting kind of nuts, I got that car dropped off. Um, that was dropped off by a customer who doesn't live here. Uh, Zach owns those. Uh, yeah, that's. There's a bunch of stuff out here. Um, oh, I think that uh, Grand Cherokee is missing a cat. It was just dropped off earlier today, like that. It, it's pretty rough looking. Not much I can do about that. Um, so, a lot of stuff. Out. Wind's blowing. A lot going on. But I thought I'd uh, just let you guys see kind of what's going on and. Um, I mean, it's, it's getting pretty nuts, honestly. There's a lot to be done here. Um, but hey, if you guys wanna come to a training event, there's only a couple days, a couple seats left for the module programming event, module programming two-day class, it's in June. Uh, but I just posted another training event. It is gonna be a two-day hands-on electrical and network diagnostic class um, here at the shop. So check out l1training.com events tab and uh, you can sign up there for the event. It includes a hotel at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in Tulsa, um, two nights hotel, the, the books, we got food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for, for Saturday, and on Sunday, breakfast and lunch. Um, so if you could just get here, we got a hotel for you and everything else, but it'll be a blast. Sign up on the website, and uh, but that's what's going on here. So, uh, We'll see you guys next time. Like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Thanks, guys and gals.